So far in this fourth chapter, in the second pada, the concentration and amalgamation of all the life energies and the powers of the senses, the functions of the elements, and so on, have been consolidated into the self, actually into the mind, and then into the self prior to actually departing from the body. So now begins the discussion of the actual departure from the body and the passage along the path, either to the moon or to the sun. Adhikarna 4. Departure of the Enlightened and the Unenlightened. Doubt. Is this departure from the body the same for the enlightened and the unenlightened persons? Or is there any distinction? Opponent. When under such a doubt, the conclusion that can be arrived at is that this departure has got a distinction, inasmuch as this departure occurs in conjunction with the subtle elements, and it is for rebirth that the elements are resorted to. Moreover, there can be no rebirth for the enlightened man, for the Upanishad declares that the man of knowledge attains immortality. Hence, this departure is related to the unenlightened man alone. Objection. Since this discussion occurs in the scripture under the topic of knowledge, this must be about the man of knowledge. Opponent. No, since this departure is described there as a fact already known, or a matter of natural occurrence, just like sleep, etc. Just as, even in a context of knowledge, sleep, etc., occurring to all creatures, are described in such texts as, when a man comes to be known as, he sleeps, Chandogya 681. When he comes to be known as, he wants to eat, Chandogya 683. When he comes to be known as, he wants to drink, Chandogya 685. And this is done so because this is helpful to the comprehension of the subject being explained, but not for describing the man of knowledge as possessed of such distinctions. Similarly, this departure from the body that is common to men in general is being described in order to establish the fact that the supreme deity in which the fire of the departing man merges is the self, and that thou art that. Besides, this departure is denied in the case of a man of knowledge in His Organs Do Not Depart, Brihadaranyaka 446. Therefore, this departure is of the unenlightened man alone. Vedantin, this being the position, we say, Sutra 7, Samana Chasrityup. Pakramad amritatvang chan uposya cha and the mode of departure is samana the same asrityu pakramad up to the beginning of the path cha and amritatvang the immortality is relative Anuposya, without burning ignorance. Translation. And the mode of departure at the time of death is the same for the knower of the qualified Brahman and the ignorant man up to the beginning of the path of the gods. And the immortality that is spoken of is the one that is attained without burning ignorance. It is but proper that the departure as described in such texts as speech is withdrawn into the mind, Chandogya 686, 
should be the same for the knower and the ignorant up to the point where they start for their respective separate paths, for this is spoken of without any distinctive specification. The ignorant man moves on, resting on the subtle elements constituting the seed of the next body, and under the impulsion of his past works, for the sake of fresh experiences in a new body. But the man of knowledge pursues the path through the nerve passing out of the crown of the head, and lighted up by knowledge and leading to liberation. This fact is stated in the aphorism by saying, up to the beginning of the path of the gods. Opponent. The enlightened man has to attain immortality, which does not depend on going from one place to another. So how can there be any resort to the elements and the commencement of a path? Vedantin. As to that, the answer is that this immortality is relative for the man whose blemishes have not been totally burnt away. For the one who wants to attain a relative immortality by virtue of his knowledge of the qualified Brahman without completely burning away his ignorance. In such a case, both reliance on the elements and the commencement of a path are possible. For the sense organs cannot move without something to rest on. Hence, there is no fault. Now, in this Adhikarana, he begins to talk about the difference between the death of an unenlightened being and an enlightened being. And this discussion will go into tremendous detail, as usual, and lead to a complete description of the path after death for the different types of beings. So, what is the main distinction here? Well, actually there are three. An unenlightened being is someone who still thinks, I am the body, I am the mind, I am an individual, and so on and so forth. Then there are those who are enlightened in the conditioned Brahman. Brahman with qualities. Saguna Brahman. And they go along the path of the sun. Now, the path of the sun leads to the higher planetary systems. The path of the moon, the path of the unenlightened beings, leads to rebirth on the planet Earth. After experiencing the karmic results of their pious and impious activities, they get a fresh body. The enlightened one who has realized the Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities, goes to the planet of Saguna Brahman, Brahma Loka, and it may have other subsidiary names and forms such as Siddha Loka, Charana Loka, and so on and so forth. But basically, it is a realm where everyone is self-realized, at least to the degree of the qualitative Brahman, Saguna Brahman, and where they are free from sin and enjoying the results of their liberation in association with God and Goddess. So this is a beautiful place, and it's far superior to so-called heaven, which is actually the planets of the demigods. And the difference is the planets of the demigods are temporary. They are destroyed in the pralaya at the end of every kalpa, a set of four yugas. But Ramalok, Maharlok, Tapalok, Siddhalok, all these higher planets exist undisturbed for the entire duration of the universe. And they're only destroyed in the Mahapralaya at the very end of the creation. So one gets to enjoy with his favorite forms of God and Goddess for a very long time. And at the end, they are withdrawn into the Brahman, the unconditioned Brahman, Brahman without qualities, near Guna Brahman. But in the meantime, we're learning a great deal about how the individual soul 
is supported by karma, by the elements, by prana, and so on. And this shloka, Chandogya Upanishad 686, comes up in many of these purports. So I thought I would take a look at the original context, and it's really beautiful. So let's go through that and then discuss it. Chandogya Upanishad, Discourse 6, Philosophy of Being, Chapter 8, Text 1. Udalika Aruni said to his son, Shvetaketu, Learn from me, my dear, the ultimate stage of sleep. When any man is said to be sleeping, then, my dear, does he become imbued with being and goes to his own nature. Hence people say svapti, he sleeps because he is gone to his own. Text 2. Just as a bird tied to a string, having flown in several directions and finding no resting place elsewhere, settles down at the place to which it is fastened. So also the mind, my dear, flying in several directions and finding no resting place elsewhere, settles down at the life breath, prana, because, my boy, the mind is fastened to the life breath. Text 3. Learn from me, my dear, what hunger and thirst are. When some man desires to eat, water is carrying away what has been eaten by him before. Hence, just as they speak of the cow carrier, the horse carrier, and the man carrier, so they speak of water as the food carrier. Thus, my dear, know this to be the sprout shot up, and it could not be without a root. Text 4. Where could its root be apart from food? So, my boy, from food as the sprout, infer water as the root. From water as the sprout, infer fire as the root. From fire as the sprout, infer being as the root. All these creatures, my dear, have their root in being, reside in being, and rest in being. Text 5. Now, when any man desires to drink, fire is carrying away what has been drunk by him before. Hence, just as they speak of the cow carrier, the horse carrier, and the man carrier, so they speak of fire as water carrier. Thus, my dear, know this to be the sprout shot up. It could not be without a root. And here's the famous text six. Where could its root be apart from water? So, my boy, from water as the sprout, infer fire as the root. From fire as sprout, infer being as the root. All these creatures, my dear, have their root in being, reside in being, and rest in being. And now, how each of these three deities water, fire, and prana, on reaching man, becomes triplicated, has been explained to you before in chapter 7. When, my dear, the man is departing from the body at death, his speech merges into the mind, mind merges into life breath, life breath into fire, and fire into the supreme deity, Brahman. Now, that which is this subtle essence, in that has all this itself. That is the self. That is the truth. That thou art, O Shvetaketu. Tatvamasi, that thou art. This is the Mahavakya. And in this section of Chandogya Upanishad, it is repeated many times. So we should understand, actually, you should take the time to go look it up and read it. I'll put a link in the description below to the Chandogya Upanishad, and you can read it for yourself. It's a wonderful lesson in all these great truths given by Udalika Aruni, huh? Aruni of the forest. He's a forest dweller. He's a great brahmana, very learned, 
and very austere, means he has done the practices to realize this for himself. He's not speaking of knowledge from a book, or you could say he's speaking from knowledge of the book of life, by direct observation, by experience, by realizing his own self and watching the movements of the self as it goes from one state of consciousness into the other. This is the sadhana. You know, we've spoken so many times of the four states of consciousness. You should be able to observe yourself moving from waking to dreaming, from dreaming to deep sleep, and from deep sleep as you change from different states of consciousness. In between them, there is a time when you can access the turiya, which is the substrate of all states of consciousness. And this is the sadhana that leads to complete self-realization. Realization of Turiya, the self that thou art. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.